गणना गणपति हवामहे कलिंगवीनापमश्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पत शुन्वन्नोदिभिस्सीरसाधन Did we go through this learning okay oh yeah, um shanti 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 tasmarat yajnat sarvahutah tasmarat yajnat sarvah 
But because it is combined in the Sandhi, I am chanting as it is written here. It is not Bhayadataha, Ubhayadataha. Ubhaya means to. And I will explain the meaning what Ubhaya means when we learn the meaning of it. But right now, when you chant it together, it, it sounds as Bhayadataha, but it is Ubhayadataha. Yeke cho Bhayadataha. Tasmadash 
so in the output you got the PDF file correct it as ja not G everything is ja only not everywhere you are ja ja not j i even sanskrit it says g in the pdf yeah yeah correct it as j it as j a not j i okay tasmadashwajanta yeke chobhaja dataka gavo khajagni re tasmagat tasmagat jata ajavajaka tasmadashwajanta everybody yeke chant all the three from the very first tasmat if yad sarvabhataha samhrutam prashadantu chant the three mantras together tasmat yajna sarvabhutaha samhrutam prashadajyam pasugastagaschakre mayam yajna What are we learning? 
purush suktam very good what's the point of it what's the point of purush suktam why should we waste our sunday morning time learning purush suktam what's the point of it hello adit why are we learning purush suktam because we have to hmm what what are we learning about purusha suktam what is it that we are talking about purusha suktam yeah um, i told you already a story that is associated with it an episode very important episode in the serial of god called called god god consciousness if you think of a serial called god consciousness one of the episodes in god consciousness is about whose story is this jesus the jesus the christ you don't say jesus christ jesus the christ right very important to say the christ why the united states of america why not the india like that why the christ huh yeah not jesus christ jesus the christ the christ is somebody who is already present within us the all pervading christ consciousness is within every one of us and therefore it is referred to with a very emphasis on the christ and why is this related to the christ what is it this about so far who attended all the classes raise your hand huh okay oh you very good <laughs> excellent you are present with our being present here always okay all right so why what is the significance of this associated with the christ hmm come on let's not waste time we have only 45 minutes hmm hello adults also come on yeah sacrifice sacrifice, sacrifice. and uh, what so when we are learning this mantra there was a point until which the sacrifice had happened and what happened if what was before the sacrifice what is after the sacrifice there is creation before the sacrifice after the sacrifice if you understand sacrifice is uh, where well, the the mantra that said tam yajnan barhishi prauchan purushan jata magratah tena deva ayajanta sadhyar sheshti that is the point of sacrifice where they sprinkled water on him and then they offered him into this ritual called yajna which means sacrifice and then there was stuff before that there was stuff after that now if it happened to jesus christ why should we worry about it and why should we learn about it that's the other question we were talking about yeah yajna is a ritual yajna is a ritual simply a ritual but what is associated with that yajna the ritual is the spirit and therefore when you associate the spirit with the ritual then it becomes spiritual okay right in spiritual there are two words what are the two words in spiritual spirit and ritual what are the three letters common to both of the words r i t what is unique to ritual u a l what is unique to spirit s p i how many total number of letters nine so spiritual is nine letter word indestructible nine is an indestructible number why is nine an indestructible number ha yeah, adit come on you know this seal academy has to come through come on ha <laughs> ha uh, huh? why is nine indestructible okay now adults No, it's not a biggest single digit. Yeah, it's the highest yeah. until you get to a single digit. Yes, that is true. But there is a uh, more significance than that. Why is nine indestructible? Hello, come on. We add anything to nine. All the total is multiples of nine is always. Yeah, no, the sum of multiples of nine is always nine. Yeah. Huh? No, you're going to math. Yeah. How is it? How is it possible? Because it's a 
very auspicious number it is indestructible spiritual is indestructible ritual is six spirit is only six whereas spiritual means indestructible if you are a spiritual person you are indestructible nothing can touch you why it is nine numbered letter associated with it now when we talk about the ritual and the spirit even you are learning this mantra there is the ritual aspect of it is going on there is the spirit aspect of it is going on and when you connect those two aspects then this mantra becomes useful for our daily lives this chant becomes useful for our daily lives if you only learn the mantra and we have no connection to the spirit associated with it then you are only caught up in the maya of the ritual which really doesn't take you across you understand huh understand the significance of why so when we are talking about the sacrifice the ritual part of it then tasmad yajnat sarva bhutah from this beautiful ritual called the yajna came out everything and what are all the things that came out of this yajna is being described in these three mantras and the first one we already talked about last class samhrutam prushat ajjam what is that i already took heard mixed with ghee came out then what else came out Hmm, different Pashugas, Tagas, Chakre, Vayavyan, Aranyan, Forest, Gramyas, Chay, different types of... So, what is the, that is the ritual part of what came out. And I already talked about what is the spiritual connection to our own spirit, our own self. What is that? Before sacrifice, life is different. After sacrifice, life is not different. Before sacrifice, awareness is different. After sacrifice, awareness is different. Before sacrifice, you are only living as the I, the simple I. After sacrifice, you live as the love. Because everything that is coming out is after this process of transformation. What do you do in a yajna? You put a fruit, it turns into... What does it turn into? If you put into a fire a fruit, what does it turn into? Ash. 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 If you put a wood stick, what does it turn into? Ash. 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 Flower, what does it turn into? Ash. Okay, what is everything turning into? Ash. Can an ash come back into fruit? No. Can, a wood, can the ash come back into wood? No. No, so it lost its original form. And therefore what it has become is, what is ash? What is ash? What is ash? Vibhuti. What is Vibhuti? Vibhuti is simply grace. Everything has turned into Vibhuti. Everything has turned into grace. And hence what is the significance of it is, before you sacrifice yourself, your thought, your word, your deed, everything that, that is about you is no longer about you anymore. No longer about this I anymore. It is all about really in the Supreme Consciousness. Therefore, what happened? In order for this transformation to happen, what the indirect, the Da Vinci code of the curd mixed with the ghee is milk is transformed into curd and ghee after transformation. You understand? Right? So that is the part of what we are talking about. Now, then what happened? Pashu, Gustav, Chakre, Vayavyan, Pashu, all different kinds of animal tendencies that are within us. Animal tendencies. All of those will come out. Then what means what? You are now getting rid of lower level tendencies are all coming out. They are all offered into the sacrifice. Lower level tendencies are gone. Then what comes out is, this is the beauty of uh, just two Saturdays ago, I had a beautiful insight, Swami's uh, beautiful insight about what spiritual, the word spiritual meant. He gave very beautifully uh, the entire, it's like a vignette opening of the entire consciousness opening. So Swami was talking about, he was asking the questions like I was asking you, spiritual, how many letters? Nine, indestructible. 
Then he was asking what is common to spirit, what is common to what is common to spirit and ritual or IT. And then he said R I T rigorous introspection and transformation. R I T rigorous introspection and transformation. What is common to the ritual? U A L. Then he said, understanding, awareness, and living the five values. That's how it starts. L A U T I R I P S. I'm reversing. Spiritual. S P I R I T U A L. Right? Hello. Are you connecting to this? What is the outermost letter? L A U T I R I P S. He was going from this to that and that to that. And then suddenly Swami said, What's the outermost letter? L. What's the innermost letter? S. And then he said, This is the nine letter word. He said, Sri Chakram. Sri Chakram, nine avaranas, nine different layers and with every layer you are going inside and inside and inside and finally you connect to that S and what is that S? That S is the source of everything, that S is the Rudram and once you connect to that source, you are outside, it starts with the L and what is that L? Swami said the L is actually the five values of the five L's and what are those five L's? The five L's are, the first is living, second is listening, learning, loving, laughing. Hmm? It starts first with living, living your life, with full of life you have to live. Living, then the next one is learning, while you live you learn all the time. Third is loving, listening, laughing. The five L's and the five L's are the five values. Now what happens is after this transformation process, everything that you are doing becomes spiritually connected. Tasmad, Tasmad Ashwa, no, sorry, Tasmad Yajnat Sarva Kutaha. Next one is Richa Samani Jignire Jignire. Richaha Samani Jagnire. Act from this sacrifice, Tasmat Yajnat Sarva Hutaha. Everything is sacrificed into this Yajna, and from the Yajna came next Richah Samani Jagnire. Came out Richaha, this Rugveda, Sama, Sama Veda came out. Ruk and Sama Veda came out. Then Chandagumsi Jagnire Tasmat. After that came Chandas. Chandas is the meter of speaking, meter of existence. Chandagumsi Jagnire Tasmat. Tasma Yajus Tasmat Ajayata. And then came Yajuhu, which is the Yajur Veda, came. Now, the previous one was all about transformation and getting rid of animal tendencies. Now, that is the context of the first aspect of transformation. The next aspect of transformation is, once you get rid of these tendencies, animal tendencies, whatever you speak becomes Veda. Whatever you speak in the context of the, the, the word of that particular divine one that has sacrificed itself is Veda. What does that mean? Not, not, that doesn't mean that whatever they speak become mantras or rituals or anything like that. They are speaking from a point of view of different level of consciousness. Therefore, they are speaking after knowing. Veda means to know. Vid means to know. Veda means after you know it is Veda, before you know it is Deva. After you know you don't need to go search for God yourself. 
that doesn't mean you know suddenly you know people say i am god i am god that's that doesn't mean. if somebody says i am god without realizing the god consciousness oh i don't need to go to temples i don't need to go to churches and synagogues that is all nonsense you can try to imitate the divine ones you should not imitate them nobody can imitate god if you sit here and you do your hands like this, you haven't become sai baba they'll think you are an idiot but if you are truly in the divine consciousness then you speak from that point of view everything you speak is veda because everything you speak is from the con- knowing the consciousness you understand are you are you able to connect to the difference between simply speaking and speaking from a point of view of awareness and knowledge of the supreme self so then what happens is these people the realized ones don't listen with head don't see with the head all their faculties work from the heart not from the head for us everything is working from the head for them everything is working from the heart what does that mean whatever they say whatever they see is not in the context of their own little self it's in the context of the higher self it's in the context of everything being integrated the diversity gets integrated into unity then what happens everything is they say is ruk veda and everything they say is sama veda see now you see the context of how this mantra is describing is first is ruk veda second is sama veda third is chandas fourth is yajur veda now why is that sequence given like that why did they bring all the three vedas together and why did they introduce this chandas in bit now this is the what is called rigorous introspection and transformation rit simply chanting the mantra is would it give you that level of understanding ruk veda is all about ritual now it describes all the things about how to conduct the yajna all the thing about that sama veda is all about a rhythm and music and the third one is chandas means if you simply have the word and the music there is no rhythm to it it is not possible to enjoy it therefore came chandas the meter the meter of existence comes into place which means what everything is a rhythm of life it's the dance of shiva everything becomes a rhythm of life that means what you are in concordance you are dancing with everything around you and when you see all the disturbance around you and you are not concordance with yourself then you can't dance you can't go with the flow to go with the flow is chandas hello then becomes yajur veda yajur means the supreme knowledge is transformation it is described very beautifully in yajur veda the entire rudra sri rudra jayam is part of yajur veda it's the most beautiful condensation of all the vedanta and the interest aspect of spirituality is described in that yajur veda now you see that's the significance of saying then you start doing things with a different awareness like i was telling before as a beautiful lama explained what is what happens after enlightenment right that's the question what happens after enlightenment then what did he say before enlightenment it is chopping the wood and carrying the water after enlightenment it is chopping the wood and carrying the water what you do didn't change what changed is the attitude awareness and aptitude l a is <laughs> first living the five values then comes the attitude aptitude and awareness then what you start doing is you understand the connectivity of the two the living and the attitude aptitude and awareness that is enlightenment that is exactly what enlightenment is so tasmad ignat sarvahutah ruchah samani jagire chandagumsi jagire tasmat yajus tasmat ajayata 
Now, first one is transformation. Huh? Culture, I, I mentioned this is milk turning into curd is culturing. And then what happens is this aspect of the speaking. And that's what in Rudra when we learned, right? Sive na vachasa tva girisha chavadamasi. What you speak is Sive na vachasa. With positivity you talk. With positivity you behave. With positivity you go around. What happens is in life, what happens is there is the difference between analysis and judgment. Huh? One has to be very careful between the two. Analysis should not turn into judgment. Judgment and analysis, what's the difference? Hello, what's the difference between judgment and analysis? Judgment is like immediate. Immediate. And then analysis is once you think about it, what's the after? What it's after rigorous introspection is analysis. Judgment is there is no rigorous introspection. You throw stuff, you see something, you perceive, and immediately you throw judgment. That is what we have to be very careful about. When the per spiritual person doesn't judge people, a spiritual person observes like a Sakshi Buddha. After rigorous introspection, which is what? Is what I am observing my own reaction and reflection and resound. Is something about me that is causing me to perceive this, right? And Swami Vivekananda describes this very beautifully with a simple parable. You know, maybe one of these days we should take those parables and uh, have these children connect to the spiritual message behind them. So the scene is like this. There is a stage and there is a, a, bo a, a bottle of gold coins and gold bricks. A little boy is playing in that room. Suddenly, one person walks in. He opens the thing, he takes this gold stuff, he puts it in his pocket and walks away. Question is, if you are, if you are that little boy in that room, what are you thinking? This is introspection. What are you thinking? Okay, that he... Um, he thinks it's chocolate coins and he takes it. No, he thinks it is a chocolate, gold, you know, chocolate stuff and he takes it, okay. What are you are thinking? Um, it's good. He took the toys. He, the toys. he took the gold, you mean? Yeah, and they were like, yeah, I thought there would be toys. Okay. Toys. So the little boy is thinking, oh, they are toys and he's thinking? Yeah. Oh, okay. Say you are in that room, what will you be thinking? Forget the little boy. He stole the coins, yeah. <laughs> he stole the gold. Now you go around the room, every one of us in that room, what are we thinking about that guy walking in and taking away the coins? Then it becomes a very interesting. So Swami Vivekananda asked the question, are you judgmental about that person that walked in? What are you programmed to think about everybody that walk into your life? What are you thinking about every brother and sister that is around you? How are you looking at them? With what color glasses are you looking at them? And are you understanding that your judgment is imposed upon them? So why am I saying about this? Is because before the transformation, the way you look at life, after the transformation, you may look at the life is completely different. After the transformation, you are programmed to think with the heart not with the head okay not with the head you are you act with the heart that is what is uh, buddha referred to as samyak bhavam samyak drushti samyak sravanam samyak jivanam samyak means together in the unity you listen in the unity you perceive in the unity you behave not in isolation. When we behave in the unity, then what happens? Everything you speak is related to Veda. Everything you do is with a rhythm of life. You go with the flow. That's what I was actually coming to. The difference is if you stop the flow and you try to go against the flow, then you become judgmental. You stop, you stop others, everything is stopped. 
chandagum sijagnire tas means uh, when the context of rhythm comes into our lives then what happens is we do not try to judge that doesn't mean uh, you don't analyze you have to be very careful it it doesn't mean that you live like a a slumber guy still you use the faculties right you don't live in slumber you live in equipoised consciousness not in lethargic consciousness you, there is a difference between the two as i always explain one guy drinks the spirit and is asking who am i another guy also drinks the spirit and as who am i they are both asking the same question but they drank different types of spirits the first guy drank the spirit that dulled the mind the other guy drank the spirit that took the mind to a higher level of consciousness then what happened was they as the same could they are both abnormal right if normal mind is like that one went below mind another went above mind so this below mind and above mind is what bhagavan arbindo described as lower mind mind higher mind super mind supra mental mind then what happens is the mind that is connected with the heart becomes the supra mental mind the lower mind is judgment the higher mind is analysis the higher mind analytical tool is only distinguishing one thing and only one thing am i listening with my heart am i listening with my head so this is why swami plays this beautiful aspect of transformation when he notices that that noise is going in the in the in the head of person he stops talking to that person he stops paying any attention to that person he will totally ignore as if this fellow didn't even exist on the face of the earth once he ignores this person like this what happened the person is saying what did i do wrong why is he not looking at me only two days ago he gave me interview he did this to me suddenly what's happening what did i do wrong starts becoming the most important question what did i miss becomes the most important question then suddenly what happens is you become really rigorous introspection transformation pashu gusta vis chakre vayavyanu aranyan gram then you start looking at yourself the reactions the reflections the resound the perceptions all of those that are associated with judgment will be lowered and then the analytical mind is asking the analytical mind is called buddhi or the intellect the judgmental mind is called the mind the analytical mind is called buddhi it's the same thing referred to as two different names that's all just like us at home i am a dad or a husband at work i am a boss or a colleague or whatever right same person referred to with so many things similarly the same thing that is judgmental is called mind the same thing that is analytical vichakshana discriminative of what whether i am reasoning with the heart or reasoning with the head that is buddhi and that buddhi when we start operating girishas girisha acha vadamasi when we operate from that higher level of awareness and consciousness then what happens sivena everything is auspicious only because the heart is never divided into so many pieces heart is one and integrated so everything you say everything you speak integrates it doesn't divide it doesn't divide you from everything else if the moment something is dividing us from something else know that it's coming from the head if something is uniting us with everything else know that it is coming from the point of spiritual transformation then tasmad ashwa yes and you say from everything else you know maybe you already that's what you are trying to explain mm. uh, that everything else is not everything else that is physically present around you that's not what you are saying yeah the the everything else doesn't mean just at physical level it is it integrates physical metaphysical and spiritual levels but this is where the there are different layers of looking at that stuff right the overall integrated awareness doesn't separate the three karanas three karanas are what the three important instruments which is 
three karanas, three things that are we are commonly deploying, three tools that we commonly deploy. Word, action and thought. Manas, vachas, karma. Manas is the thought, vachas is the word, karma is the action. Integration of the three is Mahatma. Division of the three is Duratma. Bad soul. Mahatma. Great soul. Manas. Ekam. Vachas. Ekam. Karman. Ekam. Mahatmanam. Vachas. Anyat. Karman. Anyat. Now you see that people will take this and they say, I had a thought which is to kill somebody. I went. I killed that person. Integrity of thought word indeed. Am I a Mahatma? Right? Very common question. That's what we have to ask the question. That is not Mahatma. Because to begin with, what is the thought is what you have to ask. To begin with, is the thought integrating or disintegrating? To begin with, the thought is that uniting or dividing? If that thought is a uniting thought, then you stop to do the action and you say the word that is related to that thought. That is Mahatma. So they rarely even speak. But if they speak, they speak in unity. And when they speak, guess what? They have already done the action. You understand? So, when the context of everything else is what is you is everything else. Integrating yourself at the three levels of the body, the mind and the spirit. Those are the three that are we need to integrate. Very simply not only one of them. Only integrating in body is not integration. Integration of the mind and integration of the awareness in spirit. Is this too high funda spiritual for you guys? No? Simple? Any question? Any other questions? I'm just trying to think uh, mm. how can we make it actionable, you know, in everyday life. Ah. When I go to work tomorrow, mm. there is always conflict, there is mm. always things going on. Mm. You know, I'm just thinking how to practically employ some of these. So the conflict resolution, if one is able to understand what that conflict resolution is, let me tell you, every one of us will become a supreme leader in the society. The greatest quality of a leader, whether it is at a corporate level or whether it is at any level, the greatest quality of a leader is the one that has the ability to resolve the conflict and 99% of the time, the conflict is within you, not outside of you. You have to first understand what is the basis of that conflict. And if you know the basis of the conflict, then what happens is, you will be able to act in an integrated way. Now, even in the work side, it's no different. In order to establish that basis of not having conflict, what do corporations do? They set some fiscal year goals. And those goals are set at the highest leadership level and they are cascaded down into the organization. If you have any question about conflict, you refer to the corporate mission and the goals. That's where you start with. Spirituality is exactly the same thing, no difference. If we understood the spiritual principles of living, the very first principle, you have to know the Mahavakyas. They are the corporate goals. <laughs> At individual level, those goals are translated into everybody else. Then you ask the question, what is the conflict coming from? And now you ask the question, am I looking at that conflict with the question of a sacrifice or not? With an attitude of sacrifice or not? With an aptitude of gratitude or not? And thirdly, with servitude or not? Then that what happens is, whether you are in a company or you are working anywhere, conflict is easily resolved. Because what first comes into picture is sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Am I looking at this solution with my head, with my own agenda, with something that is bothering me and then transposing it to everybody else in the team? Then what happens? You can't resolve the conflict. Because people are looking at you in a team environment, they can see, oh, this guy is saying this because there is an agenda behind it. Now, once you come into a team environment, they see this is nothing to do with his agenda. He is really trying to do it in the context of the bigger corporate goal. Then what happens? <coughs> People will come together and work for you. They want to work with you, work for you, and they want you to work for them. 
automatically it happen no difference in spirituality and hence bhagwan has formed this beautiful organization which is only 100% based on only source not any force instead of taking that opportunity and say what is it that i can do to help the situation if everybody can ask the question in a sai center forget about anywhere else i am coming to this place this place is bhagwan's place i am integral part of it i am not expecting four guys to do everything for me or five guys vice president doesn't exist he is always traveling yes. <laughs> then so i brought it up because it's no different even in a sai center it's no different in a sai center it's no different in a company no different anywhere else outside the world but the first thing you have to ask the question is am i speaking from a point of view of sacrifice sacrifice yes sacrifice that's the key word yeah then sacrifice what sacrifice doesn't mean that you kill yourself sacrifice doesn't mean you hurt everybody else including yourself and you do the work but that's not sacrifice you can't hurt in the process yourself or anybody else now you see love all serve all help ever hurt ever those are the four corporate goals those are the four corporate goals for spirituality that's it nothing else those are the four mahavakyas those are the practical four mahavakyas how do i do practically love all serve all help ever hurt never four mahavakyas and i was talking about this at the bangalore satsang and uh, i was at mudarhalli and this beautiful incident that happened you know swami was asking a boy hey what game do you play and the boy said he is a tall boy swami i play volleyball and basketball oh very good very good big guy and so he is good to play that he looked at another guy jagan short guy and i said what do you play he said swami i play tennis oh tennis very good very good what does the referee say before the game starts love all <laughs> in a in a tennis game what do they say before the game starts love all who calls the who calls that the referee sitting at the top at the net saying love all then what do you do after that sir 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 wall <laughs> huh? game starts with love all that's what the referee called love all that's it then you say Sir, serve all. Then what happens? You get the points. <laughs> If you don't love all and there is no serve all, there are no points. There is no game even started. To start the game, you got to have love all, and then you start serving. Then you get points. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Those are the now. Does that answer your question? And if we operate from that point of view of what is love all? and i already explained this i'm sure to all of you before when i was asking swami what is love what does love all really mean and then he said two words right i explain i did i share this with you did i share this with love and live no swami said love live love live five times he said love live love live and then he asked the question what is the difference between love and live the i and the o in live it is the i in love it is the o then he said if your life is all about i i i i it's me it's my agenda somebody is hurting me somebody is pampering me somebody is not pampering me somebody is not taking care of me complain 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 all the time this all about the i but then once you start saying that what is it that i can do for o others if your life is all about others then it is love love all is go to a company even in your company if you start talking from a point of view of not the i the agenda but others how it is helpful for the others in your team boom already game started then what do you start doing survey then once you start surveying god is looking at only those two things god is a, yeah, this is a very very important thing and most of the time we are forgetting that aspect of it and it, that's why god's words are veda love all serve all the whole as a sense of spirituality is condensed into three words really somebody said oh, nitin nitin was the one last time i was talking about it love all serve all sister murli was asking how many words are there everybody said four nitin was sitting next to me and he was saying 
Really, there are three words only. All is common. Love and serve. <laughs> love, serve, all. That's it. Only three words. There is no fourth word. So how beautiful they think, you know. It's so simple because they are in awareness of that self. They are talking from a different point. We are caught up in the, in the game. Lot of mind. In the, in the game, we forget. We got to come back to love all and serve all. So, tasmat idnyat sarva bhutaha. Then tasmad ashwa ajayanta eke cho ubhaya dataha gavo ha jignire tasmat tasmat jata ajavaya. Then you see, from this mantra is basically saying the literal meaning of it is from that yajna or the sacrifice came ashwa ajayanta or came out ashwa. Ashwa means horses. Then also came out those with two sets of teeth. Eka means one set of teeth. Ubhaya means two sets of teeth. Eka and Ubhaya. There are animals with only one set of teeth. There are animals with two sets of teeth. Ubhaya dataha. Now, you have to end in the center of all of this mantra, sir. Why all this stupid dentistry? You know, once you go to a dentist, you are stuck for your life. They always tell you what the next thing is they have to work on you. So stop going to the dinner. That's Sai Ram. <laughs> so I have to just have fun in between. Otherwise, spirituality is too tiring and too serious business. It's not. Spirituality is fun. And it is always about having fun, good time. It's not about having cast oil faces. So, the context of this ekaha means one set of teeth, ubhaya means two sets of teeth. Animals with one set of teeth. Now, this is google.com exercise. What are all the animals with one set of teeth? Any takers right now? Horse. Horse. Uh, two sets of teeth? Cat. Cat. Cat has how many sets of teeth? One. One. Yeah. Two sets of teeth and one set of teeth. Now this is google.com, okay? You also work with your mom. Figure out what are all the animals. How many sets of teeth you have? One? Yeah, how many? Two. No, okay. <laughs> upper and lower, right? Yeah, lower jaw, upper jaw. Now, there is and the spiritual significance of this I will cover later because even about the teeth there is a spiritual message. I will come to that later. Then, then Gavoha Jignire Tasmat. Then Gavaha. Gavaha means cows. Okay. And all the all the cows came out of that. And then Tasmat Jata Ajavayaha. And from that Ignya also came Ajaha. Ajaha means is a goat, avayaha means all different types of water buffaloes. Hmm? Now all of a sudden why all these animals came into the, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, what is that, uh, the guy that calls everything out the ark? Noah. 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 Uh, who knows the story of Noah? Hey, who knows the story of Noah? You don't know the story of Noah? Noah's Ark? You don't know the story of Noah's Ark? Hello, come on. I don't know. You don't know? Okay, you should watch the movie, you know. It's a beautiful movie. Ark of Noah. Watch the movie. Then you will understand this mantra. If you watch the story of Noah, you will understand this mantra. Now, then, I, I two more minutes, right? And the time is then. Uh, one more minute. So, let's chant this mantra again. I will explain the inner meaning of this last mantra on uh, week, week after, 17th. We'll study this mantra. And this is the beautiful thing about Swami's will and Leela. It, all this mantra is about the resurrection of the Jesus. And guess what is the time when the resurrection of the Jesus happened? The crucifixion and resurrection. What was the time? What is the festival that we celebrate for that? Huh? Easter, Easter, Easter. Easter. When is Easter? April. Something. April. Huh? April. April. March 31st. March 31st. This year, Easter is on March 31st, the Sunday. So, request to Sridhar. 
think about what is an appropriate celebration of Easter and let's celebrate Easter. And we are learning Purusha Suktam, which is all about significance of Easter, which is all about the resurrection of the Jesus. And that's why Swami made us learn this Purusha Suktam during the Easter time. Again, I said, nothing planned by human being. If it is planned by human being, it won't happen like that. And by the time we come to the Easter, the resurrection mantra will come. That's how exactly it will be planned by God. Yes? Yeah. Let's chant those three mantras and then we'll say. Tasma Dhyanya Sarva Hutaha Samrutam Prashadajyam Pashogastadrash Chakreva Yavyana